You're now watching Sports Better's Paradise on the Bet Rivers Network. All right, Jimmy Ott and Paul Stone, it's championship week. It's March. Yes, indeed. Let's get right into it because unlike uh, in comparison, rather, to uh, March Madness, where you got uh, 16, 16, 8, and 8, got more games in championship week. So uh, more conferences in play. Let's get right to it, Paul. Let's look at the Wednesday slate first. Um, and that's um, Abilene Christian and Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin is projected as a three-point favorite. This is in your neck of the woods here. Yeah, th- this game actually in the Western Athletic Conference uh, tournament there and one of the many tournaments there in Las Vegas. But Abilene Christian, uh, before this past Saturday, the Wildcats had won and covered their last seven games. Uh, they did lose their regular season finale uh, at home to Utah Valley 74-67 as a two-and-a-half point home favorite. Uh, but I like the you know the trajectory of this Abilene Christian team, how well they have played uh, the last several weeks. Abilene Christian and Stephen F. Austin, the two combatants in this game on Wednesday, they split the season series in both games, were total nail biters. Uh, ACU, Abilene Christian won by one point at Stephen F. Austin. And then the Lumberjacks, they won in overtime at Abilene Christian. So two tight games. Uh, the teams won on uh, the opposing team's home court. I'm going to call for another tight one. I think we're going to get three here. Uh, I would take up to plus two, but Abilene Christian plus the points over Stephen F. Austin. Okay, as low as uh, plus two uh, in that one. We'll stay in the uh, in the Wednesday slate before we get to Thursday and some of the conference picks maybe to win the title. Uh, but the uh, the big game, yes, indeed, Cal Stanford. So before they head to the ACC and get those uh, frequent flyer miles, well, this is a rematch of the last game. And uh, just last Thursday, Stanford whooped up on Cal in Palo Alto, 80 to 58. We're projecting this line to be Stanford one and a half. You looking for a little bounce back here for the Bears? I am. And I projected at one and a half. I'd obviously love to get two or more, but I think Stanford's going to be a small uh, favorite. And as you indicated, Cal doesn't exactly uh, come to Las Vegas on a high note. They've lost their final three regular season games by an average of 20.3 points per game. So they really limp in. As you mentioned, uh, the three-game slide by Cal includes that 22-point loss in Palo Alto to this same Stanford team this past Saturday, March 9th. Uh, Stanford's win over Cal. Stanford hadn't been playing very well either until Cal came to town on Saturday. The Cardinals had lost six games in a row, all by double digits. Uh, They did obviously jump all over Cal, their rival, on Saturday. This is a first-round game there in Vegas, um, you know, matching rivals who are, um, you know, not playing very well. I still kind of like this Cal team. I hope I'm not too infatuated with them, but I like their individual pieces. I think they're going to bounce back. I think Cal is going to beat Stanford on Wednesday in Vegas. All right, let's stay in Vegas uh, in the Pac-12, a game that I'm looking at and a team that I'm looking at, and that's the USC Trojans. Um, major disappointing season uh, for Andy Enfield's crew. Uh, they regularly in the tournament, but uh, they had some injuries. Uh, and, man, they're healthy again, and they're playing great. Look at their last seven games, okay? Um, they win five of the seven, including wins against Utah, UCLA, at Washington, Arizona State, and Arizona by double digits. And then the losses uh, against Colorado, I'm still trying to figure out. I had Colorado in that game. I'm still trying to figure out how I won that bet. I mean, that was that was a, a loser there, They but they got it done. Uh, the other one was at Pullman against Washington State. Well, Washington State hit, like, I mean, all kinds of threes at the end to pull that one out. They've had seven really good showings in a row, and they've got something uh, got something going right now. So projected line to be plus two. Now to win the Pac-12 is uh, is only seven to one at Bet Rivers. So um, I'm, I'm, that's a little short for me, especially looking at a second round matchup, a rematch against Arizona uh, in Las Vegas. But I like USC uh, plus the two uh, against Washington here. I know Paul, you've got. Uh, You've noticed uh, also, even though it's not one of your picks, you've noticed USC surge as of late, their improved play. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned that they had injury problems uh, down the stretch the last couple of months. One of those injuries being their highly touted true freshman point guard, Isaiah Collier. They seem to be healthy now. They're certainly playing uh, uh, at a higher level. And, and uh, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I mean, I like uh, USC 
plus the points. And they're certainly a team uh, in these conference tournaments that seems like one of those that has the potential to perhaps, you know, advance all the way to the semifinals, maybe even the championship game. They could be a surprise team uh, come the weekend. And uh, another game on, uh, this is in Kansas City in the Big 12, and you know a little bit about them hook'em horns. Yes, indeed. And I'm still trying to get over that Baylor game. They were playing at such a high level. DeSue goes down, and they just crumble uh, when DeSue comes down. I, I don't know how a sprained uh, a sprained ligament in the knee, and he still comes back, and he looked good on Saturday. And I think his presence was a big one, was the big re- one of the big reasons that they cruised to a 94-80 victory over Oklahoma. I just love the way this team's playing right now. They rolled at Texas Tech, where te- that place was on fire. The, the, that was a tough place to win. They win by double digits. And they were going to win that Baylor game had he not gone down. I truly believe that. But they didn't. But I just think this team's got it. And they have shown that they can win on the road at Waco, at Norman, at Lubbock, and in position. In, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in position. Uh, I'm sorry, um, in Waco to do it. I just like this team and think they got a shot plus twenty eight hundred to win the Big Twelve tournament. I wonder about the, uh, the the motivation for Houston. They're one seed lock, no matter if they lose their first one uh, in this tournament. Uh, so, but uh, Texas minus five well, in this game on Wednesday, and I'm also willing to take a shot in the Big Twelve tournament at plus twenty eight hundred. Your horn, say, Paul. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Dylan DeSue. Obviously, when he's healthy, this time last year, uh, you know, backtracking, I guess, first of all, you know, he, he carried the Longhorns. Uh, got injured uh, there in the tournament, I think, in the Elite Eight game, uh, or, or the game before, actually, the Sweet 16 game. But they got to the Elite Eight and had Miami on the ropes and, and appeared to be headed for the Final Four there in Houston, but blew the lead. The Hurricanes came back. But Dylan DeSue, when he's healthy, he's one of the very best players in the Big 12. And I'll tell you another guy whose uh, uh, play is going to be really critical to what the Longhorns do in the postseason, and that's three-point specialist uh, Max Amos. When that guy is shooting, <laughs> when his game is on, uh, he, he's just uh, he's a marksman. So he can, uh, he can really give them a spark. The Longhorns, to me, and there's a lot of teams that fall in this category, Jimmy, but they are a Jekyll and Hyde. You know, when they're playing well, yeah. Man, you think this team could maybe make the Final Four? They could, you know, certainly make the Sweet Sixteen. Uh, they, they they look really good, and then other times they just seem to come out and uh, you know kind of lay an egg. The one thing I'm a little bit concerned about in their opener against Kansas State is the fact that Kansas State is pretty clear if they win this game, uh, it's maybe not only going to enhance their NCAA tournament hopes, but maybe propel them into the tournament. So Kansas State perhaps has a little bit more to play for, but this Texas team, they certainly, uh, you know, they're going to get a lot of people's attention and uh, a lot of people are going to, you know, uh, ride with the Longhorns and we'll see how it turns out for them. Yeah, and and look, uh, DeSue just provides a balance, that a much-needed balance in Texas' uh, roster. And you talk about Amos, who's already performed at a high level in March with Oral Roberts, getting him to the Street 16. But, it, I mean – it it allow it improves the quality of their shots when you've got that inside presence, that balance uh, on that end as well. And you know, K State uh, got to win, huh? I mean, you know, okay, motivation or pressure, depending on your perspective. So we will see. And I think I'll get a little cheaper line in Kansas City uh, because of it. All right, let's go to Thursday's card. Let's go to the Big Ten. And the best team against the spread this year has kind of come back to earth a little bit, and that's the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They're taking on Michigan State. How is Michigan State at a top 25 um, uh, NET? Top 20 Ken Palm. They keep losing, and they lose it to teams that are not in the tournament. So Minnesota plus six in this Thursday Big Ten matchup against Michigan State and Tom Izzo. Yeah, neither of these teams, Jimmy, comes into the Big Ten tournament on a high note, as you mentioned. Uh, Both Minnesota and Michigan State have lost four of their past five games. Uh, Minnesota pretty much, um, you know, by that late season swoon, lost any hope of gaining an at-large bid. I would think they probably have to, uh, you know, win the Big Ten tournament to get into the big dance. But they've certainly, the Gophers, have flashed glimpses of what they can be, uh, you know, at various points this season. They split the regular season series with Michigan State, one by three on their home floor there in Minneapolis, lost by 10 at Michigan State. 
Uh, but important to note that the game in East Lansing, it was actually tied with four minutes to go. So they were very competitive against uh, Sparty in both previous meetings. Uh, you know, I, I think the Gophers obviously have their backs to the wall. Uh, they're going to fire their best shot on Thursday in this Big Ten opener against Michigan State. I project the line to be about six. I'll take up to five points with Minnesota over Michigan State. Michigan State, just a reputation of branding. I mean, they, they've been dealing with inflated numbers a lot uh, this year. So they have uh, they have failed to cover the spread uh, a lot uh, coming down the stretch. Home losses, too, uh, to Iowa. In, oh, I'm drawing a blank uh, right now. But, I mean, just uh, – and then in, in Indiana falling so b- far behind in that game this past Sunday. All right, let's go to Conference USA. Huntsville, Alabama, the host site uh, for this one. A 4-5 matchup between Liberty and Texas El Paso. We're projecting a line as the number four seed, Liberty, minus two and a half. Yeah, you know, it's fair to say, Jimmy, that Liberty's been a considerable disappointment this season uh, after being picked to win Conference USA uh, along with Middle Tennessee uh, in the preseason media poll. Uh, but, the you know, the Flames, they obviously never challenged for the conference uh, crown. They finished 7-9 and nine in league play, uh, which ironically was the same league record as their co-favorite, Middle Tennessee. Um, Liberty, as you might expect, uh, they've... Uh, you know, falling short of the um, public's expectations at the at the betting window as well. They're only four and thirteen against the spread since December thirtieth, as a single digit favorite in their last ten games in that role. Only one and nine against the spread. Uh, UTEP won at Liberty sixty seven fifty one on March second as a nine point road underdog. Uh, they enter the conference tournament. Does UTEP on a three game winning streak? So they're playing better than Liberty. I think they're going to get two and a half points, but I'll take, you know, I'll take even one probably. I think UTEP's going to win this game. I think they're going to beat Liberty there in Huntsville on Thursday. All right. A couple of games that I'm looking at Thursday. And, look, everybody knows the storylines in this one, okay? Uh, Rick Patino, uh, I mean, got his team playing good. They should be in uh, with a 29 NET right now. Um, unorthodox uh, motivational angle where it just slams the, the physical <laughs> – limitations of his roster, but somehow they've responded. Um, And this is the game where he had the meltdown when they had that 19 point lead against Seton Hall. So St. John's were projected a lot at minus five. I even though Seton Hall is there, they're, you know, they've, they've got uh, stuff to play for as well. Both teams still not completely safe in this one, but I like, I like St. John's and let's face it. I mean, Patino's a great coach, and I like them at this spot and look for them to maintain that lead uh, when they build it uh, this time. Any thoughts on St. John's at Seton Hall on Thursday? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I mean, I, I think the mo- motivational edge is twofold for St. John's. You know, first of all, they need a win. I think uh, all the pundits who, who keep up with the, the bracketology have made it clear St. John's needs a win to get into the tournament. And uh, they need to beat Seton Hall, so there's a lot of motivation there. They're playing on their home, one of their home floors there at Madison Square Garden. And then I think the second point to note is the fact that Seton Hall was indeed the game that kind of turned around their season and got Coach Patino in such a foul mood. So I think that won't be lost <laughs> on the players. I think it'll be mentioned. Uh, they'll, they'll recognize the Pirates on the floor uh, on Thursday. And I think you've got to expect, even though, like you said, it, it could be – added pressure, the need to win. But I think you're going to get an A-plus effort uh, from uh, St. John's in this spot. Uh, and I think the John, uh, the Johnnies maybe win by double digits here. I like them minus the points as well. Uh, St. John's, I also think they're worth a shot at a plus 700 to win at Bet Rivers. Here's the thing. UConn uh, did not win this tournament last year. How did it work out for them? They cruise uh, to six double-digit wins in, uh, you know, in hoisting the trophy. Uh, no colic uh, for – the uh, the Marquette uh, the, the you know for Marquette there uh, Creighton I mean heck they they beat Creighton by double digits uh, last time we no who could forget that uh, all white before Easter outfit for uh, Rick Pitino and they should have beat them uh, in Omaha where they uh, miss well they gave up a second chance uh, bucket game winning bucket for the uh, the Creighton Blue Jays so I think St John's is worth a shot uh, to win the Big East tournament on their home floor at MSG. Also, the Big Ten, and, you know, you never know how teams are going to respond with the coaching change. I think it's been a pretty big difference for the Ohio State Buckeyes. They're playing Iowa on Thursday. They're uh, projecting this game as a pick 'em. 
Iowa, one of the more efficient teams offensively, just started the game with a scoring drought, dug themselves a 21-point hole that they just could not get out of against Illinois on Sunday night. This is in Minneapolis at the Target Center. This thing is at a pick. Ohio State here in this pick and also through the tournament at plus 2,200 to win the Big Ten tournament. I think they're live as well. So, and same thing. Hey, Purdue won the Big Ten tournament. How'd that work out for him last year? Not saying that you're going to say, hey, look, guys, let's go out there to lose. But there's just de-emphasizing that you can put on this stuff. Ohio State, um, hey, they won, uh, they won four or five in the, you know, they, they've looked, uh, I'm sorry, five or six now and looked pretty good. They're a different team, Paul, right now. Yeah, I mean, ever since the uh, the coaching change, they, they have been a different team. They are playing at a uh, – a high level and this Iowa team, you know, you just never know. They're so offensive, uh, you know, relying on that offense and the, the shooting and the outside shot. So you never know really what you're going to get with the Hawkeyes. Ohio state has been extremely efficient uh, in these past five or six games. So uh, I don't have a strong opinion uh, either way. I would probably if forced, I'd probably go with Ohio state just because I see a little more of a consistent, uh, performance there with the uh, with the Buckeyes they have won five of six including that win against Purdue to start it off and they were the other team besides Iowa to beat Michigan State at East Lansing in those back-to-back losses for Sparty at home um other uh, maybe choices to win the uh their conferences uh Kentucky is plus 350 at the SEC uh no argument there uh with the uh, Kentucky Wildcats how about their road wins at Auburn at Starkville at Gainesville and Knoxville, I mean, they have really put together. And when they have all of these wins on the road, guess what? They have won the whole thing three previous times. The Cats are hot. We know they're talented. Yeah, you know, we've seen the, the really good and the not so good from the, the Wildcats this season. You know, it was more than three months ago, but and that's a long time ago. It was back on December 2nd. They lost to uh, NC Wilmington uh, by, eight, by seven, rather, on their home floors, an 18-and-a-half point a home favorite, and then they lost more recently on February 21st. They lost on their home floor to LSU. But uh, as you mentioned, you know, when I look at teams that I think are capable or live to make a uh, run during the conference tournament or the NCAA tournament, I want to know how do they play away from the friendly confines? How do they play away from their home court? And you mentioned it. They've been the betting underdog on the road three times in the past month. You mentioned those three games. They were getting nine at Auburn back on February 17th. They won by double digits. Uh, They were getting five in Starkville, beat the Bulldogs by a deuce. And then the exclamation point came this past Saturday. They strolled into Thomas Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, knock off Tennessee. It was a statement win in my mind. Won that game 85 to 81 as an eight and a half point road underdog. Tennessee remains a likely number one seed. So what a big uh, road uh, win for the Wildcats. Kentucky, they're not an outstanding defensive team. You know, no secret there. But they have shown glimpses at times of being improved uh, on that side of the court. Offense, clearly a different matter for the Wildcats. They are one of the more prolific teams in all of college basketball. They've got five double-digit scores, averaging in double digits. They've got another, Justin Edwards, who averages nine points a game, and he came up big against Tennessee with 16 points. And then I would be uh, remiss if I didn't mention the development of their true freshman guard, Reed Shepard, uh, a local talent uh, who they've been recruiting for many years. Uh, But he came up with 27 points against uh, Tennessee on the road. And then just a few games before that against Mississippi State, he had 32. So this is a true freshman, again, on the road. He comes up with 27 this past Saturday at Tennessee, 32 at Mississippi State. He just screams of a guy who can come up big in the tournament. I like Kentucky not only in the SEC tournament there in Nashville, but I like them in the NCAA tournament as well. You know, that game in Starkville, I called it the highest level game in the SEC this year. And, um, you know, he had that uh, career high 32 and also the game winner, uh, you know, the runner uh, in the paint. Uh, to break the tie in that one. Um, and, you know, we all like to use Ken Palm as a reference sometimes, but Ken, Ken Palm rankings, Kentucky 17, Michigan State 19. Mm, they're not that close. <laughs> they're, they just aren't uh, that close, no doubt about that. And a perfect segue, and you're talking about uh, teams that can win away from home. Uh, that's one of my picks uh, in the ACC. That's Clemson. 
Clemson has won at Chapel Hill. They've won in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which is tough to do. They have, um, oh, um, they, they got robbed, uh, you know, at the end of the game at Cameron. Uh, you know, they give up two uh, free throws uh, to Duke to uh, to lose that one. They have done a really good job on the road this year. Ten to one, I think, is worth a swipe. And especially after Duke and North Carolina, a little bit of uh, anticlimactic after their uh, their big rivalry game uh, this past weekend in, in Cameron. There's another one that you're looking at, uh, Paul. I gave an opinion on the Texas Longhorns in the Big 12. Uh, you're looking at another shot in the Big 12. Baylor Bears are at seven to one right now at Bet Rivers. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a fair price on this Baylor team, and as one of the top four uh, seeds in the Big 12 tournament, they get a buy into the quarterfinals, and in the quarterfinals, they could draw Kansas. And this is a Kansas team. Bill Self announced earlier this week that their top two players are not going to play in the Big 12 tournament, so they're going to be without their top scorer, uh, guard Kevin McCullough Jr. Averages 18 points a game, six rebounds, four assists, an all-around player. And then they're going to be without their inside presence, Hunter Dickinson, the guy who averages yeah. 18 points a game, 11 rebounds, uh, 1.5 blocks a game. So their top two players are not going to be available. So Baylor's got a real good path or a probable path to the semifinals. Baylor did lose their regular season finale in Lubbock by 10 to Texas Tech. But I still think this Baylor team could make some noise much like Kentucky, not only in their conference tournament, but in the big dance as well. One reason I like Baylor is the development of their seven-foot freshman center from Cameroon, Missy. He's averaging 11 points a game, 5.6 rebounds, uh, 1.5 blocks. And, and this guy, he's just going to be phenomenal when he gets a little polish on his game, gets a little more uh, experience, very athletic, uh, very much a run and jump big man. But he's a player, a star in, in the making. And then they've got 6'9 senior Jalen Bridges, who began his collegiate career at West Virginia. Uh, in that Texas game uh, Monday a week ago there in Waco, Bridges kind of showed what he can be offensively. He scored 32 points against the Longhorns, pretty much responsible for Baylor's victory over Texas. So I like this Baylor team. I think Baylor might sneak into uh, into Kansas City and win that uh, Big 12 tournament. So I like Baylor uh, in the Big 12 and NCAA tournaments. I, I think Bridges has a beautiful shooting stroke. I mean, he really can uh, stroke it. I mean, just beautiful to watch. Um, the other thing about them is um, the, the interesting thing, and uh, Scott Drew who loves the, the zone, but in that national championship run when they blew out uh, Gonzaga in the final, they played a lot less zone that year if you watch him this year he's kind of going back and forth feeling it out so to speak they sure do seem a lot better uh, when they play man to man so we know they're athletic we know their length I mean he recruits that roster I mean that's not by accident that he has all that length and usually he likes that length in his zone but man don't give up all that athleticism as well uh, on the uh, on the defensive end and play a little man as well. Championship week it's a lot of fun. Don't forget to bet rivers uh, all of the uh, all of the action and I'm going to just tell you again that half a point only costs you eight to ten percent of buying that half a point on those low numbers from a half point to whole. They are paying off. That's the cheapest you're going to get it anywhere in the um, in the uh, in the industry at uh, Bet Rivers. Paul and I will be uh, be back next week uh, looking at March Madness matchups. For Paul Stone, I'm Jimmy Ott here in the Sports Betters Paradise on the Bet Rivers Network.